Uh, my name is Costas Metaxas. I'm originally from Australia, but these days I'm based in Amsterdam in the Netherlands, if I'm not snorkeling in Greece. Um, in a nutshell, it's a luxury object, but it's a piece of art. So that's really where it comes from, number one. I, I decided a few years back, if I was going to ever do hi-fi again, I could not do the traditional stuff because I couldn't see a point. There's so much here, as you know, if you walk around here, there's so many things look virtually the same, that's pointless. So for me, what I try and look for is a technology or something where there's a bit of a breakthrough. Similar to, for example, when Van Gogh did his paintings, in those days people didn't like them because they saw this thick, gelatinous sort of, uh, you know, paint and they weren't used to it. But he was ahead of his time. So in my case, it's CNC machining like a sculpture so in other words CNC machining a sculpture and doing things that aren't geometric so that's where all this comes from but to be honest it all came from a Shea lounge chair so I was designing a chair for a furniture company in Italy and that's what gave me the whole feel and look for this whole collection you're look looking at now everything I've designed everything I studied originally biomedical engineering not by bio not biomedical stuff yeah I was supposed to be a doctor on that sort of crap but it wasn't my thing clearly so I then deviated from that but audio was always my passion and I used to build kits as a kid of course destroying them as usual and then that's where it evolved but I was always fascinated by the marriage of engineering and you know the aesthetic so that's that's really where it started but I think that's the thing and the thing is I think if you're a manufacturer and you're worried about what people will think about your, what you're doing then to be honest uh, I don't think there's a room for you anymore I think what you have to do is you have to have, have a view you have to have a, a an idea a style uh, a concept that is identifiably you if you look at the luxury products like LVMH or Cartier or even Rolex a bad example but they have an identifiable look so I think that if you're doing anything today either you have to have your own look or you get lost in the noise because as you can see around this show there's so many speakers that are just boxes with drivers that how do you remember them they're not memorable it's seduction I think whatever happens uh, for me I've had the very big luxury of having friends with people like Frank Gehry like with Zaha Hadid and those friendships uh, you know what they made me understand was that you can't be scared to do your thing to do your what is coming from inside of you in other words that's the artist in you so either you run with that and you let it take you somewhere or if you try and stunt it too early or by trying to make it fit into the normal cookie cutter mold you never you're never going to ever get to where you need to go so to evolve as a as a designer artist whatever you call yourself you have to let things move in the under their own speed under their own direction and let them you know get to where they need to go To be honest, uh, I don't think Philippe Stark's a great designer, <laughs> to be bluntly honest. That's okay. I think the best thing Philippe ever did was his juicer. And I think after that, you know, he's, he's had a few good hits, etc. But he's not my role model or barometer. Uh, as I said, me, people like Frank Gehry, people like Wolf Preek, Preeks from um, Coupe Himmelblau, people like Zaha Hadid, Hans Hollein was very groundbreaking. For me, it's the people who break the barriers, who are not, are not too scared to sort of do that. I mean, Zaha Hadid she never made a project up until the last say 20 odd years yeah. so she spent virtually 30 years almost doing exploratory work because no one would give her a chance so that because her visions were so different from everyone else's but i think the other great example we had in australia was uh jorn utzen who I actually met in uh, Denmark, in Scandinavia. And Jorn, of course, came out in Australia, did the Sydney Opera House. They all laughed at him, ridiculed him, basically kicked
kicked him out of the country. Yeah. And, and yet the Opera House has become the identifiable icon of Australia. Absolutely. So what does yeah. it tell us? Yeah. So it tells us that we shouldn't be scared of people who do something a bit beyond or a bit, because that's the evolution of the human spirit. Mm. And instead of making a bomb, we're making something which um, gives us pleasure, which is what I like about what I do too, because it has the duality of giving us pleasure, not from a visual point of view only, but also a performance point of view, which is for me the most important thing.